Good afternoon, or good morning to uh, uh, the Passmore Center, uh, Owls Wood Carving, uh, Wood Burning, and Scroll Saw Club. Uh, we do each one of those activities here in the club. We call it a club because uh, anybody who walks through the door and wants to learn how to wood carve or wood burn, or my specialty is using the scroll saw behind us here. And as one of the projects for the club, we adopted the, the theme of the Great Horned Owl. And behind me, you can see a project that every member of the club had a hand in, in cutting and carving the owl. Uh, at the same time, when we, when you join the club or come in as a member, we, we have a library of different magazines, whether it's wood carving, scroll sawing, or whatever it might be. We have a whole library of those with a subscription. So the goal for today is we're, I want to introduce you to some of the work that's being done that can be done on the scroll saw, okay? It goes from the very simple uh, line cutout project like the, the hearts, just to kind of neat for Valentine's or an anniversary or something like that. Or uh, the, another type of cutting on the scroll saw is what we call stack cutting. And that might be where you take a pattern which is the chickadee, the Carolina chickadee, to be a fact, be a matter of fact, and you select three different types of wood that you want into the bird, and so you take those, typically a quarter inch thick, each one of them. We temporarily glue the pattern on top of that, and we tape around the, the stacked material and we cut that, that project out. We only cut it out once and at the end result, after you cut it out, we have three different types of wood so you come up with three different colors of birds if you want to make it. And so here's what the end result could be, something like this. Now I have some ladies who they're both doing this this very project right now with the chickadee. So that's stack cutting, okay? The next type of cut that we have is much more tedious. It's called fret work, and there's a reason why, because you just kind of uh, getting to you. Uh, I took a picture of my grandson's uh, elementary school picture and I changed it to a negative image and I put that negative image on a quarter inch piece of maple uh, plywood and you see this that every dark place, every black place in this picture you have to cut out. But what's so unique about fretwork, it, particularly in this picture, there's not one piece of wood that's floating by itself. Every piece of wood is connected in some way. It might be just a little bit like that earlobe or something like that, but it's all connected. That's called fretwork, okay? And for me, I enjoy... Uh, intarsia, wood, the wood art intarsia. And intarsia is making a mosaic of wood and it's fitted together and glued together and it's supported by, a, a, say, a masonite backing. And you come out with a project similar to George Washington here. And we'll talk about this a little bit more later on, okay? But this is uh, intarsia. 
the most important part of, of uh, using the scroll saw behind this, and I'll, I'll get to that in just a second, is you never use the machine without training. A clean area is a safe area, a safe area so always make sure that things are in the proper place or put up before you start uh, working on the saw. Keep your hands away from the moving parts. And you have to remember that that scroll saw is the scroll saw blade itself is five inches long and it's very, very thin, but very, very sharp. So you have to watch your fingers and hands at all times. And we never adjust the saw while it's, while it's running. And we don't wear loose materials, uh, long sleeve shirts or uh, a bracelet or something like that where it might get into the, the machine itself. And we never leave the machine when it's running. And we use the right blade for the right wood. And typically, scroll saw blades come in from the very thin to the thicker blades. And the thinnest blade is a number two, and it progresses up. So the lighter the wood, the thinner the wood, the smaller the blade, okay? And it goes up accordingly. Uh, the bigger blade, whatever the blade is, it takes away part of the wood, and that's called a saw kerf. All right, so it's it's a wasted part of the wood, but we've got to make sure that we compensate for that loss whenever we start to make our project, our pattern, our intarsia pattern, so they all fit together as best we can. And I'll go back and say that. Uh, accuracy is extremely important when we're doing intarsia. Uh, wood selection, okay? Uh, we want to make sure that when we select a piece of wood that it's square and flat on both sides and we, we've got to make certain that our scroll saw blade is exactly square. Otherwise, you're, you're going to end up with a gap when you try to fit all your pieces together, okay? So, uh, wood selection, uh, let your imagination go. Uh, intarsia, originated back in the 15th century in, in Italy during their Renaissance. And what they would do is they would uh, decorate a door or a wall and try to make a mosaic picture out of those different types of woods that they had. And that's how they came up with this art form, okay? When we're, when we're doing a project, typically we want to take a master copy of, of the pattern and we want to make about six copies of it, okay? And this is old George Washington here. And we take one of those picture of those copies and we want to glue it or tape it on the back side of a piece of plexiglass, okay? And so after we get the pattern fixed behind there, as we cut the pieces out of the, the pattern, we want to make sure that they fit over the, the pattern as best we can. Now, what I, this is one of the techniques that I use. I use um, clear, uh, contact paper, shelving contact paper. I put that on top of the piece of wood that I'm going to, to work with. Then I take, say, the pattern, that one little piece of that pattern, I turn it upside down, spray it with an adhesive, attach it to that piece of contact paper, and then I wrap that whole thing with uh, 
packing tape, clear packing tape. And what the packing tape does, it kind of lubricates the saw blade as it's going through all that cutting. All right. So when you get this pattern, remember I said you want to make about six copies of, of your master. You want to take and cut out each individual piece of this pattern. And that's going to come up so that that's what you'll be cutting right here. All right. That, that's the way that works. Now, sometimes uh, if you, you think that you're going to make more than one project from the, the uh, same uh, pattern, you can make uh, a hard copy of each individual piece. For instance, this one right here. I took a piece of uh, formica that I had laying around in the shop, and so I made an individual uh, piece of, of that particular segment of the project. And you'll see it, it comes out and cuts out just like that. So, for instance, this is a six-sided thing right here. So, if you make a permanent copy of that, that segment, it's much easier later on. Let me stand up here and, and show you something about the scroll saw itself, okay? The first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that that blade is cutting square with the table itself. And I made a simple little jig which uh, helps square the blade and there's a saw kerf right in the middle and it's 90 degrees from, uh, excuse me, 180 degrees from, from the saw table itself. Okay, so you can check to see that you're cutting squarely. Okay, uh, the saw itself, uh, you've got a speed, you've got an off and on, and you've got blade tensioning here. Okay, one of the safety features about our saw is we have a foot switch down here and it operates the saw and as soon as you push on the switch it begins all right one of those things is that scroll saws are sold by the dozen right a package they're bundled up by 12. and the reason for it is you, you may or may not be able to see this blade, but it's very thin, and they do break, all right? So the safety feature is that I've been doing this almost three decades, and when that blade breaks while you're sawing, there's a bit of a startle to it, and your foot will jump off of that switch, so things will stop. So that's a really good thing, all right? So that's, that's how... We, we start with the pattern and blade selection, I, I briefly talked about that, the smaller the number, the thinner the working piece you'll use, all right? Uh, speed, the more dense the, the material, the faster you want the machine to run, all right? This is a piece of eastern cedar. It's pretty darn dense. So we want to set that, that speed up here probably 75 to 90% of what the machine will actually run so that it, you can You can also hear it's kind of noisy to run the scroll saw. There's a lot of dust uh, created and whatever, so uh, a gat or a dust mask is important, hearing is important, and eye protection is also important, okay? So those are the, some of the things we want to look for. When you come down and, and join the club, uh, 
we want you to get familiar with the saw. And so what I have, very, very basic, is we're going to teach you how to do a straight line, a straight cut on the scroll saw, okay? <clears throat> you may or may not be able to see this, but I've drawn two lines. One line is black and the other is red. A black line, trying to cut a black line is more difficult because the blade is also black and sometimes that blade will almost disappear as you're trying to cut that black line where if you'll buy a pattern that ha is made from red lines, that, that blade doesn't disappear. But what we will do is we'll teach you how to cut a straight line and practice, practice, practice. That's what happens with the, the scroll saw. And then we'll also have you do zigzags. And this is where uh, you, you'll learn to let the blade do the work. Don't you work the blade. What I mean by that is this blade should be of such tension that it flexes no more than maybe an eighth of an inch from any side or front to back. And some people, beginners particularly, will try to push that blade real hard to get the, the wood to cut. And what we want you to want to do is let the blade work, okay? So, when you uh, take and make your pattern, whatever that pattern might be, you want to label or number each, each piece on that pattern, say three, four, five, six, whatever it might be, so that once you cut this piece out, whatever that little piece is, if you number it on the back, say number six, you won't, you won't uh, be confused as to where it might fit in your project, okay? After you cut your, your pattern out, okay, it comes out in block form like that, all right? And that's where the sanding and, and the carving comes in. We use both techniques, uh, a simple drum drill, like a drum drill with a little sanding drum on it, will help you form some of the shapes needed to make your project. Okay. After you've cut all the pieces and you've checked them for fit, and for instance, if there is a piece that you want it to project more of a profile. For instance, his little eyebrow here, all right? You cut a shim and you put behind that piece of wood so it projects out a little bit and gives you a three-dimensional aspect of the project. All right? Gluing, after you get all of these pieces put together and you have sanded them and you've got them just fitting perfectly, you want to dust them off either with a real fine bristle brush or uh, compressed air. You want to brush them all off and then you want to see if you think about putting that finish on. Uh, remember I said we, we after you put all the pieces together and you form them on all of that, then you want to glue them to a backing and you can probably see on George Washington here maybe you can see that this this part right here is a piece of masonite all right and what you want to start out doing is you want to glue an outside piece of your project wherever that outside piece might be it might be down here all right in his coat so you glue this one in place and that's kind of your anchor so that all of these other pieces will fit exactly in place 
behind or on this backer board. Okay, so that's how that works. Uh, I use spray lacquer sometimes. I use a gel polyurethane finish sometimes. It's, it's your choice as to how you want to finish your project. I think that this has been an introduction to uh, scroll sawing and, and uh, carving, and, and I, I want you to come and enjoy learning about the scroll saw, and I'll be here to help you anytime I can. Thank you.